was kind of, I was disappointed. It kind of uh, didn't quite go the way we planned for the, the game to go. And a few mistakes on my behalf, pretty much. Uh, a stupid penalty maybe, and uh, a few missed points. Just to sum it up, it was a massive improvement, but still a disappointment that we didn't win, because I think everyone on the team felt we deserved to beat them. This season, I think, I think realistically, we could. there's no reason why we shouldn't have won all our matches, but the games just seem to get away from us somehow. And there's something missing which we haven't quite found yet, but we've got a few weeks left to put it right. OK, so usually the way I explain it, because you get asked a lot because no one's ever heard of it, it's a mixture of basketball, football and rugby. It's a football and a Gaelic, uh, football and rugby person at the same time. Kicking it over the bar is one point, and you can kick it under the bar into a goal for three points, and you can only take four steps before you have to kick it back up to yourself or bounce it. Solo it or bounce it every four steps, and you've got to alternate between the two of those. Rugby because there's contact, but not as much contact as rugby, so you've got shoulder to shoulder contact. Apart from that, anything really goes. And then I'd probably give up and say, uh, search a video and watch it on YouTube because it's very complicated. So the pitch is looking all right for Saturday. Uh, the groundsman's given us an 85% chance of playing, but we are we do need to worry a little bit about cutting it up for the week after. Um, but it's only us that uses this pitch, so what we do to it is our problem. Um, there's a couple of tractor marks down there from when they uh, tried to mow it and tractor sank, so they need to sort that out. But they said they should have that done for Saturday. But then there's a puddle in the middle which will probably still be there on Saturday, but it shouldn't be as bad as it was last Saturday. We managed to play through that OK. So, yeah, we should, should game should be on on Saturday. Um, Gilly football means quite a lot because I've kind of been playing it my whole life. So my dad kind of introduced it to me when I was like a young kid and I've kind of played it ever since and the opportunity to play at uni is like obviously kind of a big factor as well why I came to this uni, having a Gaelic team, being able to kind of carry on my passion at uni is something that's yeah really important to me. It's part of my heritage sort of thing because I played it when I was a kid and it's like a community to me. So it's, you know, obviously you've got the sports side of it which is enjoyable and staying fit and all that, but like there's the community that the team have created at Nottingham and that means a lot to me as well. And also it means a lot that I can play a sport that my mum played when she was young and my granddad and it's played throughout my whole family and my mum's really proud that I've played it. Every, I think most people you ask, especially my house, they say the only thing I really care about at university at the minute is Gaelic football. And uh, I kind of everything I do kind of revolves around it. And it's my number one priority at the minute just because I just enjoy it the most. And like, I don't mind taking time off from things and putting in my effort into Gaelic football and just trying to get better and improve and everything. And it's more than just a sport because it's the group of lads and the group you meet is far more than just a team. You go out on a Sunday or whatever and you go out playing with them. You kind of, they kind of, probably some, my best mates at uni all come from the team. Back in London, I sort of, uh, I ran kids parties and it sort of, I had the same sort of reception at them that I give kids. As in like, it was really supportive of everyone. Like, I knew that I was absolutely woeful, but the support I got from the team was astounding. So. They can get you through a lot in life as well as just on the pitch. Well, I think it would be fair to say in the past few years, it's kind of become the centre of my life. Well, certainly at university. Uh, it's something that I wasn't growing up. People might think now looking at me that I've played Gaelic football all my life, but growing up it wasn't really my main sport. But then when I came to university and attended the first taster session led by Aaron Kelly and Paddy Nutley, I quickly realised this was something I could get into. And three years later, I'm president for a second time and spend a lot of my time with this club. All right, so this is where we train on the 3G. And this is our club's locker where we keep everything. All that's really in here at the minute is our balls. But we've got an ironing board, which uh, last year's president, Paddy, kindly left to us. And we've got our welfare and sport pledge combined with our, the GAA's manifesto, which we keep in here. We've also got a Christmas tree, which is also Paddy's. That's about it for the minute. Speed 
got speed. Uh, it's, it's season has been bogged down by weather, and like um, the rainy season, of course. Uh, but I feel as though like once we get once we got uh, training sorted, we all. <laughs> <laughs> Once we got the training sorted, and I feel as though I feel a bit more positive oh coming into this game now. <laughs> uh, today's training session went well. I feel as though the boys have shown intensity for the last few weeks now, heading into the middle of the season. Uh, put, put a lot of uh, training effort already. And I feel as though they're doing really well. And uh, how do you feel going into the Loughborough game? Um, I feel positive because you can you can you can never go into a game with your head down. So I always think positive that the boys going to bring it bring it home and make sure we get we get our three points back in, in the league. As you can tell, I'm not really Irish, but I have uh, lived in Ireland since I was. 11, 11 years old, so this, um, this basically uh, means home for me. We're here at a very windy Grove Farm today for University of Nottingham's fourth game of the season against Loughborough. Yeah, there's definitely been an improvement in weather conditions since their game against Birmingham last week. The pitch is significantly less wet, despite a tractor sinking in it earlier in the week, and that's been filled in, and they're good to play. We're not quite sure what's coming from Loughborough this week. Uh, they did the double over us last year, but it's their first game of the season, so we're not quite sure what to expect. Stephen here bringing the ball out from the back. Nice kick pass into the half forward line for Charlie O'Connor. Charlie O'Connor brings it forward. Hand pass out wide to Charlie Bowe. Charlie Bowe takes it out wide, cuts back in field. Plays the hand pass into Fergal Lydon. Straight back to Charlie Bowe, turns, shoots. And that's over the bar. That's a lovely point for Nottingham to start the game. And number seven for Loughborough here, standing over the three, just outside the 45. He takes it out wide into the full forward, number 14, who's made a great run. Plays a hand pass inside, and that's a great finish pass mark to give Loughborough the lead. This hot ball looks like it'll be contested by Stephen for Nottingham, and number nine for Loughborough. Ball goes up, that's pretty 50-50, but Nottingham have come away with the ball. Kick pass played in the corner forward position for Murdoch, but he's lost out the foot race to uh, Loughborough's cornerback. Loughborough's cornerback's fumbled it, and that's good harrying from Murdoch there. Hand pass played upfield into number seven. Nottingham, uh, Loughborough here look like they're struggling to clear their lines. That's great interception there from Nile Duggan. Loughborough win it back. Oh, he's fumbled there at the front of goal. There's a chance here. Fergal, goal. Great goal there for Nottingham. That puts them back in the lead, and they're not going to be very happy with that goal. Good harrying from the forwards. And that'll be the end of the first half as the referee blows his whistle. I'm sure the lads will be very happy with their first half performance, especially the way the scoreboard's looking. Yeah, I mean, with a seven-point lead, I think we can bank on um, Nottingham coming through today with the win that they need after that very frustrating draw against Birmingham last week um, and get the score that they need to go to Division One Championship. Another hot ball here on Nottingham's right-hand side. Be contested by Luke O'Hara. Oh, and that's a clean catch there from Loughborough's number eight. Luke will be very happy about that. Loughborough make their way out from defence. Couple of weak challenges there from uh, Nottingham's forwards. Plays the ball into midfield, into number eight in the middle. Oh, sells Stephen there with a dummy. This is a great move. Plays the ball out to the left-hand side. They have a fumble there from Loughborough. We're covered well. Takes a solo, has a look up at the posts. And that's a great point there from Loughborough's number nine. And Loughborough definitely seem to be chipping away at Nottingham's lead here. Loughborough here, hand-passing it round the midfield. Number eight plays a kick pass out into an open man. That's awful tracking from Nottingham's players. Almost a lack of effort there. And you know, this could just be fatigue, but with so much on the line here, it makes this really frustrating to watch. Loughborough's full forward here beats Tom Payne, makes a strong run into the middle, still going, still going, and manages to find a great finish past Mark. You can see there how excited Loughborough are to finally take the lead, and with Nottingham's performance in this second half, I can't see them losing it either. Yeah, I really can't see Nottingham regaining the lead, especially with such little time left. It's really disappointing, especially considering they had such a big lead going into half time. Hard to say. I mean, we had a numerical advantage during the match, and maybe even if you you can say at half time over and over again that we're not going to let it get the better of us, but it just creeps into the back of your head, I suppose. Everyone loses games, but when you feel like you haven't really played to like the to play to your to ma the max ability, like given as much effort as you can, it's like quite disappointing. So yeah, it was quite a tough one to take, really, because everyone like. Yeah, losses can happen, but to lose in that manner where we 
feel like we haven't given our all and let like Kieran down, our coach, and we kind of let people who support us down as well. It's, it's quite hard to take really. So hopefully we'll be able to put it right on next game. Uh, how do I take a loss? <laughs> <laughs> Not very well, to be fair. I kind of uh, just go into my own shell. And especially when, no matter how well I play, I kind of think of the bad things that I did in the game. And I just think, especially like the Birmingham game, it was a draw. But the only thing I could think of afterwards was hitting the post and the stupid penalty I gave away. And if I hadn't done that, like, we could have been a point up. And it's good, though, to get back into training then and you fix the mistakes. But I don't, know, don't take them too well. <laughs> if you go anywhere in Ireland where Gaelic football originates, Gaelic football and the GAA is at the heart of most communities and I think we've done well to recreate that in a university environment where university sport is kind of it's volunteer led anyway but Gaelic football there's that extra bit because Gaelic football is an amateur sport so everyone just does it for the love of it and I think that's evident across our club. Uh, so at home uh, it means quite it's quite a family thing because me and my four cousins all play for the same team, uh, team founded by granddad so a lot of like Uni Gaelic is also coming, it's mainly about the team at home, but Uni Gaelic is a lot, everyone is really good mates and everyone kind of stays good mates. Um, I think the recognition of us as a box competing sport isn't quite there, but we're doing our best to push it and see, and the university can see how hard we're working and all our numbers are improving and everything's going up, so we're definitely going in the right direction. So yeah, it's important that Gaelic football stays recognised as a book sport and also that it stays recognised as the 15 a side sport that it should be played as and on grass, not artificial surfaces. Um, I'm worried that these changes that they're proposing may, it may encourage more unis to take part, but that may be at the detriment of the game itself. Well, uh, Division 2, going into Division 2 Championship is something we just don't really want to be doing. And lo losing this game now at the weekend means Division 2 will be more than likely where we'll be headed. So uh, a win really sets us on the right foot for getting into Division 1 and getting box points and just getting more recognition from the uni. And the more, the more we're in Division 1 and at the top of the game in the country, the more recognition we get from the uni, the more funding we get and just, we can just grow more, basically. We've looked at what games are left. And if we beat Loughborough once, despite only getting a draw against Birmingham, we sh it should stand us in good stead to make Division One Championship. F you know, for example, football, they don't have any problem with keeping lads on. They had 400 trialists for their club. If we go on a big losing streak, we might start losing players because you don't want to play for a team that's constantly losing. So the stakes are the survival of the team. I think we finished sixth in the Bucks table last year and we still don't get anything near the funding of the bigger teams like rugby, hockey, football. So I do feel like we are unfairly treated compared to those teams. I think we would definitely get a better pitch if we weren't Gaelic football, um, or at least we wouldn't get left in the corner of our university's sports complex. to be um got to be more aggressive more, like more desire got more, more like got to want, want to win basically you've got to prove it out there as well there's no point doing it in training you've got to go out on the match day and like prove that you deserve to be playing for the team and you deserve to be representing the uni so hopefully we'll go out there um for the next game and we'll put in a much better performance and hopefully get a better result i think the next game is a big big indicator of how our season will end and I think we're capable of a big performance. I think this team and this club has a big performance in it. Just need to show it. Oh, win it. Winning is probably it's the best thing. Because you're winning there with a group of lads and you see all the hard work pays off basically. You see the work that everyone and everyone I know around you knows the kind of work you're putting in. We win together, we lose together, we drink together. <laughs> <laughs> so when I put on the green and gold jersey or glass Argosaur in Irish, uh, it means a lot. And I always want to go out and do the best for my uni.
lads. Um, I'd, I'd say, I think, how long have I been doing this now? Probably six years I've been involved in the UN now, and that is the best performance yeah. we've, we've put on the pitch. Yeah, I fucking hate losing. And I, don't go, I don't go home and put a medal on saying best performance, but we did ourselves justice that day to do that thing they asked. Hopefully, I'm, I'm hoping and praying now that because we've only lost kicking the ball to them twice, we'll have a bit of leverage to say we should be in the same division as them for the championship. Because we still own the ball, we can beat that team. We've got it in us. <laughs> so, proud of everyone that's here, lads. Big performance was put in, everyone took it seriously. So, we'll go out on the last night, get a fucking wank, get a talk about what we've achieved. And then we'll all get on it now. Because we've got, what, three weeks of hard work now until championship. I only have a go, lads, because we're something in the team. That's why I want to keep pushing it. And if at the end of the day, you take losses and things need to be fallen apart, what are you going to take from it? Why would you carry on playing Gaelic? Would you carry on playing Gaelic? I'll carry on playing Gaelic as long as I'm able to, because it's just nothing can quite beat the feeling of kicking a score or making a tackle. And it's just the community feel that goes alongside it. I think it's unrivaled in any other sport. It's only going to grow like next year the same. There'll be lads hanging around. As long as they keep it up next year and just grow the club again, it'll be great. I would take this season as a building season. Our squad has grown a lot, but we had a lot of new players. So hopefully it's a good building, good learning season for next season. We're losing a big core of the club. I mean, we're losing our president. We're losing most of our back line and some of the most senior players are moving on. So even if it does go poorly, there is this big, big reset coming that we can focus and then try and recruit and try and build something sort of new. It's pretty much been the main part of my uni life. Like, without it, I don't think I probably would have enjoyed uni.